A short intro, I met Robin 1.5 years ago uh, during a project with Fraunhofer. He was one of the first employees of uh, GoEuro and after he left GoEuro he founded a PR and marketing agency called ABCD Agency. So he's really quite expert of uh, marketing and PR and how to push projects forward. So let's go into the podcast. Microphone. Hi, uh, I'm Florian from 99 Startups and today I'm here with Robin. So Robin, tell, tell us something about you, yourself. Um, hi, I'm Robin. Uh, I used to help Noreen building GoEuro. I was part of the PR and marketing and uh, after that I built ABCD and now we are Involving into a company builder, becoming a company builder for medical startups. Cool. So, um, tell, tell us something about the time and go Euro. Like, how how do you how did you met the founder? How did you get in contact? How did you st start to to work for them? And how did it develop? Uh, I honestly had been just lucky to meet him. Uh, I told a friend of mine that I would look for soon for a startup I can participate in and uh, Naren was still on his own sitting at Beta House so I met him and I don't know that's that's how it all started and then I quit my job in a PR agency I think after two months again and, and joined Naren. So how fast did you did you grow your team like how, how long have you been to the just two and uh, how fast did you bring new people in? Good question. Um, well Patrick, the, the CTO at that point joined before me obviously, then uh, there was Benjamin, another IT person and, and that's actually it for, that was it for, I don't know, half a year I guess. And uh, we had Tim Clayton, a super senior advisor who helped us from time to time. And then, I don't know, it picked up after, after uh, the first large investment. And then we very soon became eight. Alex Hood came, the head of SEO, and uh, Daniel, the head of SEM, and blah, blah, blah. And then it's, it obviously scaled. Yeah. Okay. To explain uh, really fast, like your Euro is like a big a travel website where you can like book direct trips in Europe and uh, you go all over, like not only airplanes, you get like right away also uh, trains, um, cars and so on. So if you could, in one side, many different options how to get from A to B in Europe. Um, how did you, how did you, how did you find the first two IT guys you got in your team? Did you... Did you have their like kind of a onboarding process or was it just okay they, they were into the idea and then they were just right away in the team? Or how did you fix that like it fits the I, I have honestly the culture? I have honestly no idea okay. whatsoever. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I guess at the beginning you, you need to be very lucky, honestly. Okay. Um, some people stick if they if they fit and match your culture and whatever atmosphere and uh, others will leave soon or you have to kick them out. So I guess uh, Goyuro and Naren in person had been very lucky um, with the first people he hired. Alex Hood is still there. Benjamin, the tech guy I just mentioned also. So uh, yeah, I guess really at the beginning it's just you are happy if there is a skilled person. And if this skilled person is then on top matching your, your culture, I guess you are very lucky. So, what what was the feeling to to work for for Go Euro? Like, if you say mention culture, like how you would describe it? <laughs> well, obviously it was hectic and, and and stressful, but that's how it is. If you want to uh, build a, a successful venture, um, still, I, actually, it was very cliche. We, okay. it, it was exactly how you imagined it. Lots of work, but. Obviously, we got a lot back, um, becoming maybe the most promising startup in, in Germany. So uh, to say it wouldn't have, or it would have not been hectic and stressful, 
is obviously not true, but uh, it also gives a lot back in, in, in terms of, of fun and, and, and network. Obviously, network, I, I benefit a lot from, from Noreen in this network. So, yeah. So you were heading all this, like you had a co-sharing, co like a sharing office probably, or like a co-working office together? Well, better house. Of yeah, better house. Like yeah, we, we, we actually sat in the, in the main room, yeah. in the loud room. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So you had like one table where all... We had one table yeah. for these then four people at the beginning. Okay, yeah. interesting. So it was a really directly communication just on the hand, all three all the time, like all four all the time together and like... Every decision yeah, was made course. together. Well, <laughs> all the decisions, or most decisions, obviously were made by, by Narain, but yes, you have short ways to communicate, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. So, how, how, what did change after the first money got in and like the scaling started? Um, actually, with every funding round, you should focus on even more skilled people, even more senior people. Um, I, I didn't really understand it at, the, at that time because you, you always think that you are capable of doing the same, but after a while you recognize that this is just how it needs to be and needs to become to, to, to grow a, a venture, right? So, um, uh, and th that was actually something what worked very well at GoEuro, um, hiring just the next generation and level of, of good people. Had you, like, how did the culture then from there develop? Like, was it still fun? It probably got less hectic, or was it still hectic? Or how how did the the vibe change? In the, no, in the it's just it just it becomes step by step. It becomes more corporate, and uh, for some people, that's exactly the right. Um, well, the right phase in their life, right? If, if it becomes more and more corporate and you, you have more structured organization and, and, and uh, for others it's just the difference, right? I, I guess there are people who like the entrepreneurial spirit more and like to like push things at the beginning and then and start help or help building it and others prefer the more structured an organized uh, workflow. So I guess that's just how it needs to be. And uh, right now, like how you describe right now, like with your current projects, like uh, also in your in your uh, ABCD agency, is it like a mixed phase between these two, or is it like more uh, startup vibe, or how you describe it? Just well, I mean that, that yeah, that is a very personal thing, I guess. Um, I am more the person who pushes things at the beginning, um, comes with lots of ideas and innovations and blah, 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 right? And, uh, and, and engage people to help me working it out. And um, I fortunately found very good people who now help structuring it. So that's exactly why I can now say that at some point it just needs to happen. That's just how it is. Um, it's not so much my thing. So uh, all kudos to, to Naren who really brought it from zero to now, I, I think more than 300 employees. Um, we are now in the phase, we just optimized our processes and, and are good now. <laughs> how, how did you opti like what was the process to optimize the process? You did it by try and error or did you have some, some, some inspiration? Which helped you with that? Well, everyone had his own story here, right? I mean, we all did some try and error show, uh, already in our lives. Um, almost all of the employees here, at least in the management, built startups already, so they all did their errors already, and that's actually how, <laughs> on what we built. That's the fundament of like what we built our our uh, operations now on. Is it like comparable to like? Is it can it be, is it like a kind of similar to an agile network, for example, like an agile process that you have like daily stand-ups and uh, some, some uh, responsibilities on certain parts, how you would describe it? Is it kind of this way? Of course, yeah, period. <laughs> of course, yes, we do have meetings, stand-ups, regular meetings, weekly meetings, uh, Slack, Asana, blah, 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 that all took 
us a few months now to set it up and, and but it, as I said that there was like a, a logical next step in the process so yeah um, like what what do you think about like this process that like how you said like you have in the beginning a startup which is really chaotic which tries to have as low as possible fixed structures or like as low as possible um, this whole um, um, head of like documentation and then as if you go more corporate it's going more in this fixed processes uh, fixed rules and then you get less flexible are you already in this phase in some some projects or do you want to avoid this phase or no of course of course we are um, now I mean speaking about the, the agency the, the clients became bigger and bigger so obviously some of them are already corporates so to 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 match their expertise uh, bullshit not expertise uh, expectations expectations cheers um, you have to become more corporate in your processes and, and, and organization too yeah okay. uh, of course because otherwise you're struggling a lot with reportings and other things so um, yes there was the, the need uh, to, to set it up more professional um, But with all new ventures and, and ideas and, 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 and potential startups and spin-offs and whatever we have planned for the future, uh, I would like to keep at least in the beginning this, this fa phase where you are very fast in execution, right? And, and you, just, you just do it hands-on and you just try it and if you see it works, then you, you scale it and put all your love into it. Would you say that's also an optimal way to approach that? You say, okay, you go always with the startup phase, go already, always really, like, say, quick and dirty, and then with the needs of the external thing, you just get structured automatically? You would say that's a really good way to, to approach the whole thing, to say, okay, I don't think about it, I just do it if I need to do it? Well, personally, for me, I just do it because I need to do it. <laughs> Good <laughs> answer. <laughs> Honestly, it's not my my personal interest. So. so if you if you like if you're hiring people which work with you, like how, what what is the process you use or what's what's the, the the stuff you focus on that if you're like okay I need someone or I have someone which is interested to work in your agency how you how you go in a in the onboarding or hiring process. Well, I mean, first, obviously, you look on, into their skills and their, their, their skill set. Um, and then we always have personal meetings. Um, if they are based outside of Berlin, at least on Skype, a video chat, video call. Um, and of course, you try to understand how they are as a person and how good they would fit into the company culture. But uh, also that is obviously a, a trial and error. Um, it is not always as it looks at the beginning, of course. Um, but yes, I mean, we are now, what, 20 people or something. It's, it's, we had been very lucky too. Um, my, my startup network helped also. So, I mean, I gathered some very good people I met during the, the way until now. Um, It gets more interesting as far as I'm concerned if, if, if you do the next step, right? And you need to really fill up the team by, I don't know, 20 people or something or 30 or even more because uh, then it gets tricky, right? I mean, you need to hire fast and obviously there are some, some uh, poisoned apples maybe in between. So, like, what is, what do you, like, What's your experience with that or what do you think like it just happens and you just collect the poison apples out or do you have ideas how to avoid them or what's your view on this uh, scaling, forced to be scaling fast and then um, going against the problems which come with that? Hmm. Well, I guess you need to listen yourself and your feelings I guess, I guess there is no other way than, than, than trying to to listen carefully if, if that is a good match or not I don't see any other way in, in finding out at the beginning um, I mean we're not that professional that we have 
I don't know, questionnaires to fill out and then we analyze them and blah, blah, blah. That's something we, we, we don't do. Um, I mean, if we are looking for people, usually they, they have key positions here and, and, and so we discussing it a lot internally and if the skill set matches what, we, what we're looking for and we have a good feeling personally, then, then we would hire. So you, you have like interview with, uh, like with some people from your staff or do you have like every person of the staff has an interview with the, with the potential employee? It really depends on how, how important the, the position is, obviously. But, um, well, the COO, for instance, is, is always involved and then usually the, the person who would then work the most with this new yeah, uh, uh, so. teammate, then uh, yeah, he or she would join. Would you, would you keep this way, like all the scale up? Like, because I know Google does it a lot as well. Like they they have like several interviews with different people. And they do the same. Like they ask all the people, like, how do you feel about this person? What do you think? So to get their good feeling. So would you try also to keep this direction of scaling, or would you go then more in the corporate way, more questioning, with more 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 structured, or like um, onboarding? What 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 would be your guess? How, how what's best to do? Um. Yeah, I guess. I mean, at a certain stage, and Google obviously is in, you know, in certain stages. In certain stages. <laughs> um, yeah, then yeah, just put I know I don't know like three four team leads on that call and and and, and get the idea afterwards. But yeah, that makes total sense, obviously. Um, But again, I mean, if we're talking now about startups and young ventures of 20 people, I don't see any reason why four or five people should interview this yeah. new person and anything exactly. It's, yeah. Do you have like, um, do you have an idea like, what, do you want to have a certain, a certain um, culture, a certain vibe in the team? Like, do you look that you do fun events, for example, to keep, to keep uh, kind of the togetherness? Do you have stuff like that in your head or is it? doesn't matter at all because the team is so small uh, no but I really have to admit that during your all day work you, you just forget about it so okay. it is really something you need to put in your calendar and on your radar to, to execute on it um, it's not something you always think like yeah yeah and then we have such a good mood in here uh, we go then from time to time for a beer that's something what absolutely is not happening okay. um, simply because everyone is, is snowed under by work and, and, and I don't know people want to leave then and do things with their friends and not yeah, yeah, with, their, cool. with their colleagues yeah. Yeah. and I totally understand this so um, you really need to put this in the calendar and, and plan something accordingly that's that's my advice it, it won't happen just because of that um, and then yeah I mean there are always some some driver in, in the team right who, who, are, who are pushing for like who usually have a good mood and are pushing for lunches together and you need actually to identify these people and support them a little bit uh, yeah how, how, do you, how you support them No, I mean, it would be smart to, uh, to support them financially or, I don't know, join from time to time. And this is something, especially if you're running the company, I don't know, it's, I mean, there is no lunch break usually for me, for instance. So, um, and if there is a lunch break, I use it to bounce some ideas with, with the management. Um, so later down the road, if it becomes maybe a little less hectic, then obviously supporting them by joining or financially or however would be a good idea <laughs> cool how, how do you how do you structure your day like for yourself like how how do you set priorities for example what what is your your habits there like what is what is your your method I'm actually pretty old school. I tried all these digital and online based uh, uh, structure Uh, products, tools, however you call it, and I actually got back to my little notebook. So I write down in the morning, I'm usually one of the first here, so I'm writing down my duties for the day, my and put numbers 
next to it, so I prioritize it, and uh, then I just delete it from my list. I don't know. That's how I like it. <laughs> How, how do you, it's like for the daily daily stuff, how do you keep like the overall picture? Um, I, I usually visualize it and put it on Google Drive. That's how I do it. I, I, I work very visual. So you draw a picture or you I, write the text or? Both. Yes. Both. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you a lot of diagrams and, and, and maybe even pictures or I don't know, uh, I write sometimes paragraphs or yeah. So I'm, I don't know, it's, it's, I also always use whiteboards, um, if, talking to the team, I usually use whiteboards and, and, and sketch everything. Though, so that's my way to, to remember things. And then I actually have it in my mind and then I don't even know if I'm looking at it again. I think then it's just uh, saved up there. <laughs> and uh, how, how, how much forward do you do this? Like, do you do this for a specific project where you want to land in one year? Or do you do this also for like the whole agency for five years or, and for yourself for five years? How? That's something, no. <laughs> no, I'm actually more, no, I'm, I'm having a vision and then I am pretty flexible and agile when it comes to my day-to-day -day routine. So if I see that there is a nice opportunity, but the vision always stays the same, right? So I always had in mind that the agency with all its skills is then turning into um, a company builder. So that's something I, I, I follow my vision. I'm following my vision, but the way to the vision and how I then go to uh, get to the to the goal or to the finish um, is adoptable. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I, I react on whatever comes into my mind uh, and uh, in my way actually. So if I n meet a nice partner or potential partner, um, then maybe I do a different step first and then come to the one I was actually planning first. Yeah. So, um, well, what, in, what inspired you the most, or what did you, from which person, or which book, or which source you, you learned the most? Um, I am... <laughs> so, so uh, I, I very early learned at GoEuro that, that, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying it's, 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 it doesn't make sense, but I'm not going to a lot of startup meetups and, and all these tech meetups. And I honestly think most of the time it's, it's a waste of time. Okay. Um, I am I'm doing the business development here too. If I want to speak to a person, that, that, I mean, there's an internet, right? I identify and find this person on, on Google, LinkedIn, Sing whatever, and if I want to talk to this person, I make happen that I talk to this person. So, um, of course, sometimes I go, but usually I, I I don't. I also not read lots of these startup lectures and and how to go where to where. As I said, I, I built my own my own way how how I think I will uh, execute well on on the projects we have. Um, most influential was, was obviously the time at GoEuro. I mean, I, I learned a lot what is possible if you're just putting lots of time and, and work into it. I also learned that the idea is actually the smallest part of, of everything. It's more consistency and, and, and hard work and, 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 as I said, putting lots of love into it um, and, and especially really a very good team. That is something very crucial. And, and very little is actually the idea, maybe like 5%. Uh, I have no idea to how many people I talked during Go Euro and they all said, oh yeah, uh, I had also the idea of a multimodal blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, that, that was such an obvious idea, but no one before pulled it properly. So um, uh, that was actually the most influential time in, in my life, understanding that it's uh, network is nice and idea is nice. This is, these are all nice extras, but uh, at the end it gets back to to hard work. How how did you def do you define what's the most important thing to do? Because hard work, there's a million stuff you could do. How, how did do you define what like what's the most important thing to do right now? 
<laughs> depends on like a new project, for example, or an, also an existing project. Well, I mean, nowadays I do have a team, right? I'm bouncing everything. I, I have very, uh, the, how do you say, like flat hierarchy, I guess is also a term in yeah. English. Um, so I would never execute on anything or, or do the next step without discussing it with my team. Um, I want them to carry all my crazy ideas so and, 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 and then execute on it. So obviously I'm, I'm really, really bouncing everything, especially with like two or three people. Um, and uh, before that, I, I just learned a lot. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, well, I mean, I just, I just went and, and, and tried. There was so much trial and error, really, in, in the first year or one and a half. Um, ah, maybe the first year. Um, and there were so many people telling me that it's impossible that I do parallelly what I now did. Um, so I guess you, you need to really do your own mistakes and, and, and sometimes you just need to be very, very, very convinced of, of what you're doing because there are always people telling you, oh, that wouldn't work. Just focus on the agency or focus on the medical uh, ventures or whatever. Um, but both or even like the, I have some other pet projects that won't work at all. Um, but it did. So um, at the end, it really gets back to you and, and your belief in yourself. So if you could go back to your like younger self and accept you tell him just do what you what you want to do because that worked out, what you would what you would give tips to your younger self to try to cut the learning curve a bit? Let's say in the beginning of your Euro time. You could go back now and like, you know just Ah, uh, the beginning of your time. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> there's lots of things I, I would tell myself uh, simply because I was very, very inexperienced. But that was what the, the first year, I guess, at Goyo was all about for me, right? Learning how, how I, mean, I, I worked in agencies or at Yelp uh, before. So that was really the very first time when I needed to work in a very structured way where you get a, like a white paper and you need to come up with own ideas and, and, and creations and so I don't think I would advise myself in any direction because as I said I mean it, 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 was, it was really needed that I learn it and if, if it would have just told to me I guess I don't know I don't think that is something you can then Build shortcuts for you need to be you need to make these uh, experiences. So you you like okay. So you think you can't teach that kind of, or you can't give so good advice to to to, to skip some some things. This well, I mean, as I said, that it's, it's it's. I mean, I'm sure you can if you are very or not very, but if you, if you work more in theory. Um, I don't know, you read a Lean Startup book and maybe it helps you like structuring your day, but um, it's just not my thing. I mean, I, I rather do it myself and, and learn how I, because I mean, I, every, every person I guess is thinking differently, right? Like, like the way you structure your thoughts and, 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 and how you get to results and to, to ideas. And um, I, I personally think that it was best for me to understand how I can work with my creativity and my ideas and how I can execute on it and how I can put my ideas in different people's brains so they want to work with me or partner with me. Um, that was most important uh, to me, but I mean every person is, is, is different, right? And others, as I said, maybe with a more technical background, they read a book and say, oh yeah, that was a very nice shortcut, that's exactly how I would do it, but I mean, I I, um, I work a lot on a on a very personal base, so um, it was very important to me that I challenged myself a lot, spoke to lots of people, and of course there were, had been some mistakes I did in the past, but um, as I said, it was very important for me to, to become who I am now, whatever that is. <laughs> what you would say was the biggest three mistakes in this area, like what you learned and how to contact people, how to, to inspire the people? What would say we're in the back, back rationalization, what would be the biggest mistake? The 
biggest mistakes. Um, there hadn't been like huge mistakes, I really have to say. I have been very lucky. So, um, of course, you can say, well, I mean, it was obvious that this person wouldn't execute on whatever, and you could have hired someone, blah, 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 or I don't know. Um, at the beginning, I had tried a lot uh, joint <laughs> to build joint ventures. Okay. And uh, I have a lawyer next to me and he keeps telling me that it's just almost impossible to set up joint ventures because people just see their value differently, right? right? So whatever they bring in, exactly. So I, I, failed, I failed a few times at the beginning uh, trying to, to create joint ventures. Today it's different, obviously. And you have a, a fancy office and, and a huge team and large clients. Now, obviously, if I show up and say, hey, we could build this together, people are more willing to talk and, 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 and it, the, the next steps are easier. Um, still, that is maybe a, a lesson I learned, right? That, that like people see the value they bring differently and it's, it's not that easy to, to set up. So partnerships and joint ventures. So you mean like you need to be bigger, you never need to have certain size to be able to make partnerships and joint ventures sensible because otherwise if you're a small startup you, you just don't get take seriously. Yeah, yeah. I mean obviously you should always look for a larger partner. I mean only, only a larger partner can help you scale and grow. So um, not only, but it's more beneficial maybe if, if, if you get links and traffic and whatever branding from, from a larger partner. So um, no, you should always aim for the, for the big ones. All I'm saying is that it costs you a lot of, a lot of energy and, uh, and a lot of time. <laughs> and at the end, it is very likely that nothing is, is actually coming out. Yeah. So what, what is the thought process? Okay, you want to have like, you want to educate yourself on a certain, certain area or like with a certain person. You say like you go a lot of with, with persons. You say, okay, I want to know or I need something. So I, I find the right person for that. Mm -hmm. how, how do you go about that? Do you just go on LinkedIn, type in or Google, type in, check what is the expert in this area and then you just send him a LinkedIn message or what's your... For instance, yes. As I said, I mean, I'm, I'm identifying these people and then you have multiple ways to get in touch with them and, and not getting in touch with them is just an excuse, right? I mean, you can write on, on LinkedIn, uh, try to be bold but very um, elegant in, in the way you approach, obviously. Uh, Do you have an example for that? No, it's com really completely different. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm even checking their background, uh, their age. So how, how, how do I write to them? Is it more personal? Is it, do I like just uh, uh, put all the informations in, in, uh, in, in the text? So is it like, does it bring value in my opinion that I just, I don't know, drop like all other partners and institutional uh, investors, we had blah, 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 or is it more like a one, uh, one sentence thing and I'm just, I don't know, being nice. That is really different from, from, from project to project and, 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 uh, and partner to partner. Um, but you could also call even if there is a secretary or you write to a secretary or you... I don't know, identify the email because you see other emails on their web website, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there are like 100 ways to, to get in touch with people. So, uh, yeah, you just need to be creative. And then, yeah, cold, absolutely. I just write to them and, and, and ask them if they are interested. And then you just present your vision and you try to... Yeah, I always say foot in the door and then from there... <laughs> You'll see how it. I mean, just I'm just trying to put ideas in people's brains, and 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 then I let them rest there. And after a while, you need to follow up and push. Or sometimes they even got back. So you ready? You could describe that like the picture you draw on Google Drive for yourself as visions. You try to put in the visions into their head, and try to to see if it's kind of is a seat then for them where they say they can fit in or fit not in. Is this the way how you, I could describe what, what you do there? In a nutshell, that is how I do it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
So I, for instance, rather, I don't know, it's a personal thing. I, 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 I rather get, well, as a startup, you have very, very, very often chicken egg problems, right? Like there is this one person you need to convince this other person, or you need, I know, this content platform to actually scale this uh, whatever partner. Or, or, or you always have like this chicken egg issues. So um, what I often do is, 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 is putting ideas in people's brains and obviously, yeah, the, and my method is that I'm sketching it before and, and today I'm first, most of the time, first presenting it to the team and then I, I go and, and pitch to people. But yeah, my, I mean, yes, you in a nutshell, more or less, you, you outlined it. Interesting. Yeah. So, and you just, you just don't, you don't read books, you don't... You know, you just go straight forward what you want and try and error. Well, I mean, sometimes, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a documentary. I mean, for instance, of, on, I think on Netflix, there was this print, The Legend, I think. It is, okay. it is a, a documentary about two startups in a 3D printing area. And it's super interesting how these two stories evolved in, the, in that documentary. Um, how differently these two startups actually grew, what, mis what kind of mistakes they did, and which one actually at the end succeeded. So, um, uh, yes, of course, I do it from time to time, and it's, it is sometimes inspirational, um, but I do it, I, I feel like I'm not closely doing it as much as other uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Interesting. Which is also like a not, not a stupid way to do it, because... Um, a lot of stuff, it's, it's sometimes better to find own ideas how to do it than to just copy what all everyone else is doing. Like let's say you'd want to build a car company, you can copy everything what, what they do or you try to invent a new way to do every, yeah, every yeah. old thing to build a new car and then maybe at the end there is an electric car which has some new cool stuff nobody else did. I think a decade ago or something. I, 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 I went on, on a trip around the world and I read Richard Branson's uh, biography. And um, it was very, very interesting, I, I really have to say. And, uh, and then I got, I don't know how many years it is, like seven, six years ago or something, I got Steve Jobs' biography. And I recognized it's, it's well, I mean, the one is more talking about maybe weed and LSD and the other one is more talking about the, his, his, uh, his uh, record uh, shop but at the end the essence of it is, is more or less the same so and, and if, you, if you break it down a lot then you have always these like work hard blah 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 right like always these and it, it's good to read it from time to time but I don't think it's necessary if you are already in the process of, of building something and it, for me, right? This is a very personal yeah. thing. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm learning more if I'm just, if I just go and, and make my own thoughts. Yeah. yeah, cool. Really cool, really interesting. So, do you have anything else you want to tell us, <laughs> you want to say? No, I think we're good. <laughs> I, I say thank you very much. It was a great interview. Thank and, you very much. Uh, until next time. Thanks for listening. To get the show notes, just subscribe and feel free to leave comments. Until next time.